Super. Well, on that note, then let's get started with our uh, first speaker session as well over here. In fact, our next speaker is responsible for all the Viacom 18 brands, businesses comprising Colors, Comedy Central, MTV, Nick, Sonic, VH1, and the Viacom 18 motion pictures. And prior to his role, he has also had a 21-year stint with Hindustan Unilever. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us this evening, we have with us Mr. Sudhanshu Watts, Group Chief Executive Officer of Viacom 18 Media Private Limited. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Sudhanshu Watts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. No, no, I'm good. I don't need it. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Sam, for inviting me. It's indeed my pleasure to be with you. And to talk on, uh, is the end of TV as we know it near? It's actually paradoxical for me to talk about it, because uh, as many of you know, 85% of our business is in television. We are firm believers that future of television is television. But let me quickly add, at the same point, that uh, as, as Anurag mentioned also some time back, and he spoke about, your, we are in the business of storytelling, we are in the business of content. So we do want to remain platform and screen agnostic as we go forward. But I will, and second thing I wanted to bring uh, to your focus is while 85% of our business comes from television, and under 5% from digital at this moment, our resource allocation for investments and growth into future is about 50-50. So it's 50% into digital, and therefore that's the recognition of what that, that phase is likely to be. But it is equally and importantly 50% into television as well. And I think that's an important piece which I wanted to leave you with. I also firmly believe, and I've said it earlier many times in different forums, that India is indeed an and market. India is not an or market. So the, and this is in some ways good news for all of us in India. It's also good news for many leaders in India because frankly, we need to make that hard choice to pick one versus the other is not as imminent as it is in some other parts of the world. And it allows you the luxury to play a bit of that and piece as well. It continues to remain an and market. That is because of the heterogeneity of our market, the diversity of our market, the stratification of our market, and the evolution of our market at different stages. When you look at India as a whole, and of course you do need to segment it. And as Sam was talking to you some time back, and if indeed you also look at the growth patterns over a slightly longer period, you will see that each and every segment of media and entertainment in the country is growing. 2017 was a slightly sobering year, and without doubt, but even in that year, if I'm not mistaken, and having seen what Sam was talking about, all segments have grown, and, and, and indeed, and I think if you look at a slightly longer term period, past or projections of the future, the market is growing in mid-teens as media and entertainment. Television indeed is growing in that zone, actually marginally ahead. Even for the prediction of 2018, I could see from Sam's numbers, media and entertainment or adx at 12% and television at 13%. So I think that's one thing which is happening. So mid-teens at about 15% for media and entertainment. Television slightly ahead at about, uh, at about, you know, about 30, or, you know, 15, 16%. Digital indeed is growing very rapidly. The last 10 year number which you talked about, 38%. Arguably the future moving number could be mid 20s or even, you know, late 20s. And I think therefore there is a rapid growth in that space. But in a country like India, print is also growing in mid-teens in the longer term. It's demonstrated that, and there is scope in the vernacular. And, and as we go forward in that space, the latest IRS being more very encouraging. And of course, growth in slightly smaller sectors, of course, is, continues to be there. So therefore, overall, there is growth. And continue, these growth numbers continue to highlight that big point of and as a strategy. And that's, that's important. I think the other thing which I wanted to talk about television, to now come specifically to television, and say why I think that there is considerable runway for television in India is because of some of these things. I think the first, if you look at today, uh, there are close to about 280 million homes in the country. Of the 280 million homes in the country, television homes are about 183 million homes. So there is close to about 100 million homes who do not have television. And all of us sitting in this room who've traveled across the country know it anecdotally and empirically uh, that when a person has power in their house, 
uh, and, and some income, the first gadget that comes into the house in this country, ladies and gentlemen, is television. That is indeed not changing, and I think therefore that piece of it will remain. The second question then is, to, therefore there, is, there will be more viewers. There is no debate on that. The second question is on viewership. So, or, or sort of the number, the number of hours spent. If you look at that data from Bach, the number which I last remember, was three hours, nine minutes. That was the number. That number, if you look at, uh, compares, um, you know, if I have to give you a few benchmarks, Southeast Asia would be in around four, four and a half hours. Uh, US is about six hours. Uh, so therefore, uh, and, and even India, if you were to slice this three or peel the onion a little bit for three, three hours, nine minutes, you will see that the urban, urban number is four hours plus. And, and it's the rural number which brings it down to about three hours, nine minutes. Now we know as the country progresses, as we get power to every nook and corner of the country, which the current government is committed to, and, and, and we will definitely get there, the question is when and how soon, I think the average viewership in rural India will go up. My own assumption is with the availability of time with rural India, the average viewership of rural India will catch up with urban India, may indeed actually beat rural, uh, uh, urban India. So therefore, the average viewership of the country should go up and should catch uh, mid, you know, four hours, four hours plus. So there are more viewers, more viewership. Sam, if you remember one of his earlier slides, beautifully illustrated it and therefore, you know, strengthened the point which I was about to come to the third, which is that the advertising spends in our country are very, very low. With the 18% population contribution, 7% GDP contribution, our addicts contribution is 1.5%, if I remember the numbers from what you said. I think if that be the case, there is so much headroom from the point of view of advertising in this country. And, I, and we know that as well. Unfortunately, I've not been able to get a data, but I want to look at, we are highly underbranded as a country. So I don't know the number of, number of brands per million Indians, but I can tell you that will be dramatically lower than many other countries. So I think, you know, therefore we are highly underbranded. As more brands come in, there'll be more advertising and there'll be need to build brands. And there is nothing to build, building awareness and salience, you cannot be television. So I think that's the, that's the third piece on advertising. Fourth piece is, which is indeed, you know, as, uh, as business owners in this segment, we have always been, uh, for want of any better word, uh, unhappy with this, this progress. But this has indeed now been a blessing in disguise as I think about it. That is our subscription incomes. If you look at the subscription incomes in the country are very, very low. And you know, at about $3 or 200 rupees, we can get close to about 300 channels. So what has been the bane till now is going to be boon for linear television. And why I say that is that at 200 rupees for 300 channels, nothing, nothing, ladies and gentlemen, can beat the economics of this. It is not like elsewhere in the world where cable bills used to be $80 or $100. No digital solution, no digital solution till the time data is given free. That which I don't know at this moment can ever match that. So therefore, even so, therefore, you know, even with the lowest rates of data, if you have to consume the kind of television which is consumed and take that average, the amount you will spend will be multiple times more than the 200 rupees. So for the low income Indians and also overall the, this thing, that piece, linear television per se, is here and is staple and is here to stay for the foreseeable future. So I think this, from the point of view of data, I think I sort of rest my case a little bit. Let me also, being from the business of content, share a bit of personal experience and some stories around it for you. So if we go back to India, it's uh, India of 1959, uh, a few, pe few people, you know, uh, pioneers in a way, uh, in the AIR, AIR studio started the first television beams, as some of us here would know that. We then moved to our, our news, uh, the first news things coming out in 1965, uh, Salma Sultan at that point in time, some of us in the audience will remember, she and her rose and everything, which came in, in late 60s, early 70s. Uh, some cricket on, on television. 80s, when, uh, early 80s, when color television came to India with, 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 uh, with, uh, with Asian games. Uh, and, and thereafter, the slew of Bunyad, Hamlog, the first set of uh, series which we sort of got a sense on. But the television, the way we understand today, cable television, actually got born in early 90s. At that point in time, the number of TV homes, the way we call them cable television homes, was about uh, 1.5 million in the early 90s. That number indeed is 20, 25 odd years gone from 1.5 million to 183 million. 
and is indeed growing. So my view is, and I think you know, if some of us, while I can tell you for myself while growing up in remote parts of India, there was those cantinas which would have seven, seven this thing or 13 and you keep rotating them to try and get better signal. So the television as we know it may morph, may change, but the television is here to exist. And I think that's, that's a very, very important point I wanted to leave you with. For some of you in the room, um, if you sort of, uh, the ones who are more aggressive, more optimistic, I personally feel by 20, 2022, for others who are a little bit more cautious, maybe 2025, and let's look at these two, day, these two years, there'll be close to 250 million television homes in this country. There will be viewership of four and a half hours in this country of television. And I think the future of television in that, uh, to that extent, ladies and gentlemen, is, is television. And I, having said that, do we need to adapt? Will things change a little bit? And as I was trying to give you my personal example of that antenna, which is pretty much gone, uh, will the pipes which beam it, these signals to television change? Will those pipes be more different types or, or multiple types of pipe? They already are between DTH and cable. Will there be fiber to the home? Definitely yes. Is there a future where there may be no pipe at all? Perhaps yes. But would linear television continue to remain and would that be enjoyed? The answer is yes, because the role it plays, the role it plays for family entertainment, the role it plays for many high-end live entertainment pieces, which can be enjoyed with the quality of television, which is indeed going up, is, is something which is unparalleled. And I think, therefore, if I was to, uh, you know, sort of sum up and answer the question which has been raised by me, is the television, the, is the end of television as we know it near? My answer is, is the end of television we know uh, is near or not? I will not answer. As is the end of television we like is very much there. So that the question to ask is, television is resilient, television will adapt, television will grow. And it is not about the television we know, because the television I knew 40 years back was a different television to the television which exists today. But the television we like is here to stay. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your time and giving me the opportunity. I've saved some time, Sam, <laughs> for people to go. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Sudanshu. If I may please request you. Uh, to come back on stage, so if I may please request you back on stage, Mr. Sudanshu. Yes, so if I'm going to invite you back again. Uh, I'm going to request Mr. Pradeep Vivedi, who's the CEO of uh, Sakal, to please come on stage. Uh, a warm welcome to you as well, sir. I'm going to request you to please present a token of gratitude to our speaker, Mr. Sudanshu Vats. Well, thank you once again. You managed to pump in a lot of enthusiasm and energy in the audience with those wonderful insights there.